All right, so we're going to discuss uh, shoulder dislocation, in particular the Cunningham technique for shoulder reduction, um, which has become increasingly popular. I'm not going to talk about all the indications, but I would mention that there are a bunch of different types of anterior shoulder dislocation, and Cunningham, Cunningham himself has commented, and it's certainly been our experience, that Cunningham technique is not the first choice for every type of anterior shoulder dislocation. Just be aware of that. And then certainly you need a patient that is willing to trust you and to help, as you'll see, with this technique. So if they don't meet the criteria, use another technique or simply put them to sleep. Um, let's just review the anterior shoulder dislocation, how it looks when it comes in the door. And that patient is usually elbow quite away from the body. So abduction from the torso and relative degree of neutral or even ER, and they're usually cradling that arm and slouched over and crying. Rowan, if you wanna give us a little cry, good. So that's the typical um, anterior shoulder dislocation position. And then you'll look when you get the patient exposed, they've lost the deltoid profile. There'll often be a sulcus or a dimple or stretching of the deltoid. The shoulder looks squared off. The acromion can be quite uh, apparent. Um, so these are all the cues that tell you the shoulder is dislocated. Uh, contrast that for a moment with the posterior shoulder dislocation where the elbow is closer to the body and the patient is stuck in some degree of internal rotation, be it here or here or here. The key thing is they're stuck in IR and their deltoid profile might look quite normal. On physical exam, it's impossible sometimes to externally rotate, they're stuck. In ER, they may have some internal rotation, but you cannot externally rotate the posterior shoulder dislocation. So be aware of those critical differences. The posterior dislocation, the elbow is close to the body and they're stuck in some degree of IR. Deltoid can look normal. The anterior shoulder dislocation, abducted, and um, the deltoid profile is abnormal looking. Okay, so this patient's gonna come in here. You're gonna say, hey, I'm gonna try Cunningham technique. Uh, and Part of the first approach is to take charge of the situation and have the patient trust you. They absolutely do not want to have their elbow moved close to the body at this stage. They like it out here for comfort. And so say, hey, I've got control of your elbow and just lay your hand on me. And you have a quick talk about expectations. I'm not going to do anything that's going to hurt you more than you already hurt. I'm not going to make any quick moves. And I need your help to do this. Yes? Yes. Good. So now what we're going to do, there's really three cues or pearls, critical components to Cunningham's technique. <clears throat> One is that you must detension the biceps. You must detension the biceps because in tension, the biceps is a strap that keeps the joint from going back in. The job is then to get the elbow close to the body. This is the teeter-totter effect. If the elbow is out, the humeral head is in to midline, to medial. So to bring the humeral head out to meet the glenoid, the elbow must go in. So job number one, detention the biceps. Job number two, get the elbow in, adducted. Job number three is what the patient does. And so this is where I would start and say, <clears throat> Rowan, I've got your elbow, it's here, good. You're gonna put your hand against my shoulder and I'm, I'm going to sit up straight and move in towards you. You can see how this flexes the elbow, that detensions the biceps. Now Rowan, your job is I want you to sit up nice and straight. Elbows back, deep breaths in and out, chin back, elbows back, deep breaths, chin back, elbows back, shoulders back, deep breaths. This is a mantra you repeat for the patient. And of course I have this elbow out here where he's happy for now. So to review, I sit forward to flex the elbow. This detensions the biceps. He watches his posture. Why is it important for him to have his shoulders back, chin back, deep breaths? This opens up the glenoid in a position to clear it from the humeral head so it can receive the humeral head. We're getting all the parts and pieces ready to go home. And then my job now is to massage the patient. What does this hand do? This hand is sedation. Because why do we put people to sleep? We do it so their muscles will relax. If their muscles relax, the humeral head wants to go back in the glenoid. So this hand is sedation, and I'm paying particular attention to the biceps. 
keeping the elbow flexed and massaging the biceps, massaging the deltoid, massaging the traps. All the while I'm constantly reminding Rowan, Rowan, shoulders back, chin back, good posture, big slow breaths, big slow breaths. Now, the art of this is as you're massaging, as you're massaging, this hand that's controlling the relative abduction, adduction of the elbow, this hand is slowly, millimeter by millimeter, bringing the elbow down towards the body as I'm massaging, slowly, slowly, slowly. Because of course, if we can get the elbow towards the body, adducted, what will that do to the humeral head? It will bring the humeral head out, much more likely to just fall back into joint. And that's the beauty of Cunningham's technique. So to review, what are the three things that are critical? Number one, detention the biceps. How do we do that? Flexing the elbow and massaging the biceps. Number two, the patient has to help by shoulders back, chin back, good posture, big slow breaths. Number three, the elbow has to come close to the body. If we do all these things, detention the biceps, massage the biceps, good posture, shoulders back, chin back, big breaths, and slowly, slowly over minutes if necessary, millimeter by millimeter, bring the elbow down next to the body, then oftentimes all it is is just one more massage, one more deep breath, and the shoulder will reduce. Very elegant, simple technique. That's Cunningham.